Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio. I'm Khalid Maidan and today I'm going to be talking to you about one of the most common conditions that you'll see in your musculoskeletal physiotherapy career, which is an Achilles tendinopathy. I'm going to be talking to you about what the Achilles tendon is, some of the key signs that your patient may have an Achilles tendinopathy, and of course, some of the key ways that you can help them in your practice. So without further ado, let's dive in. So first of all, let's take a look at the anatomy of the Achilles tendon. So the Achilles tendon connects the muscles of the calf to the calcaneus or heel bone of the foot. It's a pretty thick structure, as you would probably imagine, because it is able to help us generate the force required for walking and pushing up on our toes. The muscles of the calf that insert into the Achilles tendon are the gastrocnemius muscle, the soleus muscle, and actually the debate is still out there as to whether or not plantaris also inserts into the Achilles tendon. Now one important distinguishing factor we need to make is to work out whether our patient has a mid-portion tendinopathy, where their symptoms are concentrated around the middle of the tendon, or an insertional tendinopathy, where their symptoms are concentrated to the insertion of the Achilles into the calcaneus. We may treat these slightly differently, as you'll see later in this video. So what are some of the classic signs that you're gonna find during your examination that will help you diagnose an Achilles tendinopathy? Well, naturally, it's gonna focus on pain at the tendon itself. You could elicit that on palpation, during active range of movement tests, or during resisted plantar flexion tests, because of course, it is plantar flexion that the calf muscles have to reproduce, which loads the Achilles tendon. But really important is to consider the subjective history. The patient is going to be probably complaining about pain at that tendon during plantar flexion movements. For example, walking, running, or going up and down the stairs. Now, if we think about the very basics as to why an Achilles tendinopathy starts, it occurs when that tendon is having to deal with loads and demands that it is unable to cope with very similar in the way that an office worker will eventually struggle if they are given too much work, which they're not gonna cope with. So as a result, it's really important that we listen to our patient's story to try and recognize signs of that overload. Maybe it's that they've started a new job on their feet where they're now walking around all day, whereas previously they were working in an office. One of the most classic stories is a patient who has suddenly signed up to a running event, such as a half marathon or a marathon, and therefore is suddenly starting a lot more running that their calf wasn't able to cope with previously. So that leads us nicely into how we help our patients who have an Achilles tendinopathy. So if we think about that overload, unable to cope with the demands thought that we had when we discussed the signs of an Achilles tendinopathy, we have to apply the same principles to management. And therefore, it may be that activity modification or load management is a really important strategy in helping your patient. So that means if your patient has been unable to cope with the demands of the running they have been doing recently, you might have to modify it. It might be that you reduce the distance that they're running or you may reduce the speed that they're running at because more speed requires more load through that tendon. You may not find that you have to stop running completely, but at least some modification of the activity is crucial because otherwise that Achilles tendon is simply going to be loaded with the same demands that we know it couldn't cope with in the first place. So some other ideas you could use for your really, really irritable tendinopathy might be some heel wedges. These go in the patient's shoes and just unload that tendon a little bit. But I would stress that I only normally use this for my really irritable patient. Now in terms of exercises, the exercise that you'll find that comes up time and time again is a calf raise or a heel raise, where we are asking our patient to push up onto their toes, often from a standing position or even standing on a step. Now this is where that diagnosis of a mid-portion tendinopathy or an insertional tendinopathy becomes really, really important. Let's check out why. So for your mid-portion tendinopathy, you may find that the patient is able to complete heel raises off a step where their heel goes below the level of the horizontal step. However, 
If you do this with your patient with an insertional tendinopathy, going beyond the horizontal can really compress that tendon and irritate it further. And so therefore, when you are treating your insertional tendinopathy patients, you have to be aware of this, and you may be giving your patient advice that they are only allowed to bring their heel to the horizontal level and not into a dorsiflexion position to prevent irritating that tendinopathy further. Okay, so we know that we're gonna be doing heel raises with our patients, but how many and how often? Well, recent evidence has shown us that a heavy, slow resistance training program can be really helpful when it comes to an Achilles tendinopathy. Here is an example of a protocol from Kongsgaard et al. as they look into the best number of reps and sets when it comes to heavy, slow resistance training. However, it's really important for me to highlight that this should be only taken as a guide. If your patient has a really irritable tendinopathy, for example, you may want to do things differently. So please always tailor your rehab program to your patient specifically. So everyone, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure for us to have you on Clinical Physio. And if you'd like to see more from us, please head to our website at www.clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid Maidan, and we'll see you really soon, right here on Clinical Physio.